What's going on, everyone? It's Mike back again. And of course, this is our match preview. It's Everton going to the mighty Manchester City. And it only felt fitting that we go and get the best Manchester City fan on the channel, which is, of course, Big Steve. You'll know him from the Big Six. You'll know him from everywhere. He's, he's fucking global at this, this point. The fuck is an icon at this point. <laughs> How are you, man? I'm good, mate. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, I won't go far saying I'm an icon, but I'm trying to get there. You get it. Yeah, you fucking get it now. I'm telling you, you'll be able to pack all them day jobs in and just concentrate on YouTube. You, how, how, how many videos have you done to get to 5K? Not that many, to be honest. The, the way I'm thinking about it, it's quality over quantity. I see, I see a lot of these people flooding the channels. And I, and, I, and I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to do it when I feel like I've got something good to say. I don't want to spam people and people think, you know what, Steve's just waffling pure shit again. I want him to think, yeah, I'm tuning in tonight because Steve's got something to say. But the Big yeah. Six show helps because obviously we've turned that into a, a massive show now. Um, we did a Don Robbie live last week on there and, and I think it's up to 100,000 views already. Um, so yeah, no, listen, I I don't know where it's came from. I don't know wh whether Man City not having a massive presence online helps me, but I've got some good support, but it's a good wide range of support. I've got fans from all, all clubs follow me, and it's uh it's good to see. No, I'm, yeah, I'm humbled. Nah. Yeah. Mate, you deserve it. You deserve it. You're one of the realest fans I know, and actually it's a credit to the big six because uh the 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 six of you are all genuine, real fans. Like, you know, live and breathe the football clubs. Sh you know, struggle when they struggle, smile when they when they win. It's normal. So, thanks for coming on. Obviously, um, I've just been on Steve's channel as well. So, go over and check his channel out. The link will be in the description below. Make sure you subscribe to him. Um, I'm going to be straight with you, Steve. I'm going to, I'm going to come straight off the bat and say, I expect Everton to get absolutely fuck all from this game. I expect us to get pasted around the Etihad like nobody's business. We've, we're have we coming off the back of no wins in five, a draw against Man United, then three defeats, West Ham, Watford, Wolves, then a draw with Spurs. You're coming into it, playing really good football, maybe a couple of disappointing home results, but flying at you. Yeah, last game, the training session at the Swamp um, was a piece of piss, to be honest, you know what I mean? So we didn't really get much out of that, apart from bragging rights. But yeah, Palace and Southampton have come to the Etihad, got got um, results. That's what's worrying me when you say that. Oh, I to, you're going to paste us, I think to myself. Don't say that, because it scares me a little bit. Because sometimes these teams that come with that no fear, oh, we're going to get hammered, they, 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 they turn it on, you know what I mean? And... We play far better away from home, I think. Um, it's about an early goal for us. I think if we get an early one at the Etihad, we're unstoppable and the crowd's up and everything's cool. But if if it's the longer the game starts to go on, some of the crowd at home, they get frustrated. They, they, they're spoiled, you know what I mean? They want that champagne football, which, you know, if we've been playing champagne football all our lives, I can understand it. But we were in Division 2 fucking 20 years ago, so... They need to be a bit more humble, you know what I mean? And just uh, realise that the side's a great side. But no, I know you guys have been struggling a bit. And when you reel off them results, you know, it, it, it should be a Manchester City routine win. I think we will win. I just think we're on the cusp of going on one of them mad runs now where we, we need to knuckle down and go for like a 15, 16 unbeaten, you know, get us a bit clear in this title race. But um, yeah, I'm not going to say... I hold any hope for Everton at weekend. Sorry, mate. <laughs> no, mate, it's all right. I don't. I, I would be surprised if any Everton fan holds any hope. To be honest, when I when I look at the injuries that Everton have dealt with over the last six weeks, and I, I look at Manchester City and where they are, it's just it's chalk and cheese when you compare both squads. You know, we've got Iwobi. You've got Jab Gabriel Jesus. We've got. Anthony Gordon, you've got Sterling, you know, and I'm not I'm not slagging off Gordon because he's, he's a good young lad, but, you know, you've got someone who's got tons of experience and has scored goals in the past, maybe not having the best of seasons and stuff, puts on an England shirt, seems better. 
and you've got a complete new lad in in Gordon. Mm. It's just it, it it's mad. Is there any player at all that you are even slightly worried about from an Everton perspective? You know, maybe like Tom Davies. <laughs> oh no, he's injured. <laughs> Is Ricarlison fit? Yeah, he's fit. Yeah, yeah. I think he 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 can always pull out the unexpected. I think he plays with aggression. And if he channels it in the right way when he's on his day, he's a, he's, a, he's a great player, you know what I mean? And, you know, he's definitely, definitely dangerous. Um, but I just seem to think we wind him up a little bit. The last time, a few times I've seen him play, he's, he's, he seems to be frustrated. And I think the way we're playing at the back, Cancelo, Stones, Diaz, Walker, it's going to be tough for him. But if there's anyone, like you say, I'd, I'd, I'd be... I'd be thinking he's he's probably your main man for me. Yeah, I we just we've just got to get the ball to him. I think the way that I would set Everton up in this game, and and I want you to shout at me if you disagree if this will work. But I literally I want every man behind the ball when City attack, and for us to just counter, use the pace of of Damari Gray and Andros Townsend and and Richarlison because. I, that's the only way I see Everton doing anything. I need to think we need a three in midfield to try and contain Bernardo Silva getting on the ball deep or uh, De Bruyne out or Greeley, whoever it be, because let's be honest, it, it's an abundant of talent at City. Um, we've got to stifle you cutting through us because if you don't and you twist us up, we're fucked. We fucked. We get we get bummed all game. These these teams who the, the counter attack does work against us, you know what I mean? If you've got it, if you play it right and they're disciplined, then Everton can be disciplined with an out of possession. They can work hard and cut down the angles. And like I've said, you can force City wide. Let City go on the outside because if they whiz across in, there's no one in the box to, to there anyway. But mm. like I say, what teams make the mistake of, we lay these traps for them and, and they try and press us and we, 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 we uh, give them a false sense of, that they've got, they're going to get the ball and the next minute, two or three touches and we're, we're on them. And um, at the minute, we are playing really well. It's just the manner of football that we're playing is a credit to Pep Guardiola and his staff because, you know, we've not got a striker. We're playing this false nine. They said he couldn't do it in the Premier League, but, he, you know, he's doing it. We went to Old Trafford last week and it was like, it's like a training session, you know what I mean? And that's, you know, I'm not going to say it's disrespect. I am disrespecting them. I don't like them. So I'm going to tell it, say how it is. It was a training session and the players they had on the pitch, they need to look in the mirror. But Manchester City at the minute, Chelsea away, won. Anfield came back and got the draw. Paris, we played absolutely outstanding, got beat. Uh, we've won at Brighton, you know what I mean? We, we're picking these results up. So I'm expecting City to control the ball. Obviously, we do. But I just think there's a little glimmer of hope at home against City where if we're not quite at the races other teams can get in at us a little bit and like you say Southampton did it really well um, they got a point by defending well you know what I mean they, they, they blocked the ball going into Rodri um, they stopped us playing you know what I mean uh, Palace they just got the noses in front had something to defend and then we had to go gung-ho to get a result and they caught us on the counter so you know Everton score first I think that's your best option. If you score first, it sort of spikes us up a little bit and we, we, we get a bit edgy and start to push. Mm. And then you could easily score second, you know what I mean, on the counter. Honestly, mate, it would be it would be a blessing because, um, you know, since the start Everton had, it's very similar to last season. Um, they've just trickled down the league, whereas it, it's... We haven't got the squad. We can't deal with it. And and that's been a real problem for Everton. Everton will not, I think, she's pretty sure the core race still out. Mean as he might be injured and the core race still out. Um, and Calvert-Lewin's still out. So it does concern me how we're going to get the ball to transition from defence to attack without Pickford just twatting it 70 yards, which, you know, don't get me wrong. Once or twice a season, I could live with the Sam Allardyce football, but I can't live with it every week. Um, no. <laughs> what's your score prediction for the game? Um, I just think City, the way we're playing, we've got our tails up. I think coming off to the back of the United game and a good international break for a lot of our players have got goals and, and good results around Europe. I think um, 
we'll win 3 now. I think it'll be uh, just another solid performance from City, get the job done. Do you know, it, it doesn't get easier when you hear it twice. So just so you know, everyone, me and Steve have literally just recorded a video on his channel. <laughs> and uh, and he's sitting there and he's like, what do you think the score will be? And I'm sitting there literally just thinking the numbers in my head. And he goes, oh, yeah, three. And I was like, is that it? Is, is that it? Um, I, I'm dreading the game. If Everton go in there organised, nice and tight, I think the best we could hope for is like a one-one. But honestly, yeah, I think I think it's free now. I, I genuinely think I, I, I genuinely think this is the start of a really bad run for Everton because we've got some huge games coming up. We've played all of our easier fixtures already, and now we've got the Chelsea's, the Liverpool's, the Man City's. Uh, it, Arsenal are playing really well. They're in there. You know, the only two of the big six we've played is Man City and Tottenham. And yeah, we've got a draw against both of them, but you, we're playing we're playing the bigger the 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 ones that are in form out of the big six at the minute and uh, dreading yeah. it. I, I want to ask you one last question just while you're here. Um it's not really this game related, but Harry Kane, obviously yeah. he was linked to you lot in the summer. Was was he the striker you wanted? Like, was, did you want Harry Kane? Because I don't get, I don't get the Grealish signing. I don't get it. Well, but, what 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 happens with the Grealish signing? Bernardo Silva wanted to leave because yeah. the um, lifestyle reasons. He, he, he's a he's a yeah. he's a Portuguese boy. He's a quiet guy. He likes that Mediterranean lifestyle. The son. He wanted to leave. He just he, he, there was no arm, you know, our feelings. He wanted to leave. So. I truly believe that he was set to leave. So if he leaves and we sign Jack Grealish for 100 million, Jack Grealish comes in and maybe plays in the centre with De Bruyne. Yeah. And I think everything looks, makes sense. Yeah, you sold Bernardo Silva 60, 70 million. You bought Grealish 100 million. Great, you've replaced him. That's great. Yeah. But Bernardo Silva doesn't leave. Then we've already triggered Grealish's contract. Bernardo Silva comes in and plays out of his skin, who's undroppable, leaves yeah. you with a hundred million pound headache. So if you don't play him, you end up with the press and everyone, Man City's ruining football, you spent hundred million, you didn't need him, blah, 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 blah. So he's playing him wide left at the minute. And listen, he's not had a a, a bad start to the no. season. He's, he's scoring goals, he's assisting, and he's in a totally different setup. You've got to get that Pep Guardiola mentality. It takes a yeah. while. Cancelo took a season, Maris took a season. Leroy Sané took a season. Jack Grealish is under no pressure. He's under no pressure because that lot over the road signed Ronaldo and Jadon Sancho. So the pressure's on them. So if you look at them and look at us, leave our players alone. We're all right. But as you go to the Kane situation, yeah, I think we wanted him. I think for 100 million, I think City were chancing their arm, trying to get him, make bad of a bad situation, thinking he'd had a gentleman's agreement with Leave it. We'll yeah, get yeah. 100 million. Harry Kane for 100 million, 28. Great signing. Yeah. But they want more. And and, and I think the boat sailed now. And I think, I, re oh, I, I really, really think that Erling Haaland is, is, yeah. is coming okay. to us. He's coming to us. He's yeah. the one I wanted from day one, but I know it was impossible to get him. But if we've got 100 million ready for Harry Kane that we offered, go in January. I don't, I don't think it'll happen in January. I think Dortmund wanting for Champions League. But, I would try and tempt him and just blow him out of the water and just take him in, John. Yeah, I, I actually agree with you. I, I, I actually agree with you. I think Ireland's a better bet. And I think when you look at Harry Kane now, um, he just he doesn't even, like, for all of the reasons, and a lot of people give him gas because of the goals against San Marino and fucking Albania. Went about, Albania Andorra, but, Andorra, whatever it was, yeah. yeah but, in the Premier League, Harry Kane hasn't done it this season. And and whether that's because, you know, he, he's obviously still a very good footballer, but he's not scoring goals, really. And that's... that's I truly what... believe, I truly believe that in 15 years' time, Harry Kane will be doing sportsman's dinners in London talking about how he should have signed for Man City and it ruined his fucking career. Because I think yeah. he's winning nothing at Tottenham. Another Alan Shearer moment. And to be honest, I don't. I don't think it's him. I think if 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 if, if the chances to go City jump at it, but I think something's gone on. You can tell by his performances, something's gone on. He's not hundred percent happy at Tottenham. 
Now, and my argument with the Spurs was Toby and that was saying, why should we take 100 million? He's worth 150 million. I was thinking, you know what? Do you want a player that's unhappy at your club that's doing exactly. nothing? And look at him now, he's doing nothing. But mm. Aston Villa took the Grealish money and they reinvested it in the squad and made Villa a better side. If Tottenham would have took 100 million off City, 100 million makes Tottenham a better side than they are now. Because with or without Harry Kane, they don't win anything. End of story. There you go. Fucking hell. There you go. Rattled. All Spurs fans rattled. Love it. Um, guys, we're going to leave it there. Just a short one today. Um, uh, Steve, where can I find you, mate? Uh, Big Steve MCFC on Instagram and exactly the same on YouTube. Um, yeah, that's where they are. Yeah, and obviously he's on the Big Six, which is every Monday and Thursday. It's, it's Thursday tonight. It was Friday, but tonight... Uh, yeah. Is this going out Thursday? Yeah, yeah, it's going out tonight, yeah, yeah. yeah. So tonight, 8pm on Turkish LDN channel, Big Six show. Check it out. Yeah. yeah, there you go, there you go. And make sure, if you haven't watched it, go over and watch the show that they did on the Don Robbie channel because it was hilarious. It's an yeah, hour yeah. and ten minutes of just banter. Saeed and Tobes just get it. They just get it. It's fucking brilliant. And, um, <laughs> mate, yeah, you said exactly the same thing, but I wish you all the best for the season, apart from the two games against Everton. You can fuck off with that. Or you can yeah, I can, you. I can take that, man. I can take that. <laughs> <laughs> Sound. Guys, I'll see you there. Peace.